Hi guys, let's talk about crashes today. We have first-hand experience for you and we will describe what the paramotor could do for you to walk away safely from the crash. This is part 25 of the Insights into Paramotor Geometry classroom. In this classroom, we will cover every aspect of paramotor geometry. I'm gonna share all my knowledge about paramotor design. So by the end of this, you can decide what is the best and safest paramotor for you. There are four ways how you can crash. We will go through every single of these and we have first-hand experience with every type of crash. The first thing is falling on the side. Uh, the second one is, uh, is a vertical fall. Probably quite common is gliding sort of into the ground so there is a forward motion uh, in the impact and there is a full stall where you're sort of falling backwards or you're falling straight to the down with your back. Let's start with the on-site crash. Crashing on the side is a typical beginner mistake and I made this mistake again in my first years of flying. That is, I was running for my final run in a takeoff full power, but the glider was oscillating. I took off in the wrong moment when the glider was on the right side slightly, so not directly above my head, but on the right. As I took off, I suddenly ended up being on a swing, that is, I swing to the side and hit the ground with the bottom right corner of the cage and broke the cage. That was a paramotor with a mm, composite main body and an aluminium frame, like an aluminium tube frame. I was really lucky because one of the broken tubes with a spiky end went through my jacket and came out on the other side. Luckily, I ended up walking away with no single scratch. These kind of accidents are not really dangerous for you. A paramotor designer could help you by building a really strong cage that would not break, that would save your replacement parts, but in general, you won't get really injured in this kind of, uh, this kind of accidents. Having a really strong, super strong cage obviously is more heavy and it makes handling more difficult. The best thing you can do is improve your skills and not repeat these mistakes again. Second type of an accident is a vertical fall. I believe the only situation you can get into this is sort of like falling on a, on a reserve uh, where you sort of fall uh, vertically to the ground. I don't have... Excuse me, Mara. Okay. I think, <laughs> I, think I've got, I think I have a little more personal experience with okay. this one than this you is, this, so. is, this is my guest, uh, <laughs> and a good friend, Byron, from the United States. Yeah. Welcome. Thank you, Mara. Vertical, I do have a little bit of experience with that one. Um, and yeah, the crumple zone in this case uh, definitely did, I feel, benefit me in this situation. However, with uh, the crumple zone, I really feel like there's misinterpretation with, with it being an all-encompassing protection zone. Um, I did come down on a reserve very hard with a, a unit that has a, had a crumple zone. But I want everybody to know what I walked away with. I walked away with three broken ribs, a compression fracture, and a hematoma in my glute and down my leg um, that lasted over a year. And so it's, it's, it's something that um, you don't walk away from, uh, you limp away from, but you do still walk away from it, absolutely. To make the story complete, it was partially your fault because uh, you threw the reserve, absolutely. but you didn't pack your old glider, the original exactly, glider. Exactly, it downplaned. And so I threw the reserve, the paraglider uh, was still open, okay. and uh, it started downplaning. And so the, the reserve and the, the parachute separate, they stretch apart from each other, which puts the leading edge down of the paraglider, and it accelerates exponentially until you do hit the ground, um, or you hit terminal velocity. Right. Luckily, I didn't hit terminal velocity, but I had um, enough spread on the two that everything hit at once. My body hit at once, the reserve hit at once, uh, everything hit, the wing hit uh, all at the same time. And so there was a, an amazing amount of speed because I did not disable my main wing. I didn't have the training at the time, and that's why um, those injuries did uh, well, happen. Well, normally the reserve is designed for you to slow you down sufficiently Absolutely. so your impact is not too hard, and you should be able 
maybe walk away or yeah. but definitely survive Absolutely. with or without the crumple zone yeah. crumple zone would probably help and if it breaks and you get punctured by a few tubes i mean it's better to get punctured than have your spine broken but the fact is the best solution for this kind of uh, accidents is the airbag there are some paramotor manufacturers uh, using the airbag uh, underneath the seat mm -hmm. it's not really common probably because it creates a lot of drag in the air and it's sort of a little bit this uncomfortable but it is a safety feature for sure yeah absolutely okay thanks for your first-hand hey, experience you're welcome uh, we'll see you in the us <laughs> okay okay in the end you get a lot more benefit from a properly sized reserve than from a crumple zone There is a far higher chance you're gonna crash into the ground and, and while gliding, that means maintaining a forward motion pretty fast. There are a few situations that can happen. It's either a failed uh, landing or a failed food drag attempt or a, a mistake in slalom flying really fast close to the ground. In this case, the crumple zone won't help you at all. Right, the opposite, it is a disadvantage. Basically, you have a paramotor with sufficient crumple zone, you have a paramotor with very little crumple zone. As you are coming closer to the ground with the forward motion, the bottom of the cage will hit the ground first and it will tilt the paramotor forward. This means you will end up in a position like this where there's a high risk of damaging your spine uh, is a compression damage of your spine. With a paramotor without uh, a crumple zone or very little crumple zone, you have a better chance to slide on the ground. Uh, the bars would let you down, so you sort of sit down on the ground. You may hit the ground hard. In this case, a bottom underseat reserve would help because this is sort of a cushion, but at least you're gonna slide and not stop immediately. So the deceleration, is way less lower in this case than in this one. Most paramotors have this edge uh, like rounded that helps to slide as well. I have seen an accident, I was a witness of a, an accident like this. I landed my paramotor and my Snake 18 uh, to a friend of mine. He was flying really fast, full speed bar, full trims, close to the ground. He failed to manage the glider and hit the ground like this at full speed with a Snake 18. It was horrible to watch, but that guy hit the ground, rolled twice uh, on the ground. The, the, the cage was completely destroyed, which was the lucky uh, situation for him because destroying the cage allowed him to roll and sort of release the massive energy he had over a longer distance. So he was not exposed to a fast, quick, massive deceleration that guy walked away from that accident not so much the paramotor but the life is definitely more important than any damage on the on the paramotor The third and pretty common crash and accident you, uh, that can occur on a paramotor is the glider stall there are numerous reasons for that and that is too much brake on takeoff and uh, or line tangled on takeoff. That was my case like three years ago. I took off in a sort of a dirty industrial place uh, with a dirty uh, uh, takeoff place and I got some brushes tangled in the lines. As I took off, I didn't notice that, but one, right after takeoff, when I released the brakes, I noticed left brake was still engaged. It was not the left brake, it was just the, it were the lines tangled because of the brush. I had to pull the right to compensate, but I had very low speed, full power of trying to climb out because I tried to avoid a building on the left. I ended up stalling the glider, 
falling straight down. Uh, there are some other reasons, ground suspension setting and torque. In chapter 18, we have seen three different accidents ending up being twisted and falling uh, in a stall position that is falling on, on the pilot's back. Flying low at very low speed, typical competition is the minimum maximum speed flying in classic competitions. Collapse at a low altitude, flying at low, you get a collapse, you uh, sort of, you overshoot in front of the glider and fall fall down before the glider gets into recovery. Breaking too early on landing, uh, that's a quite a common mistake, especially of those who have sort of fear of, of landing, like beginner pilots com coming close to, uh, to landing, pulling the brakes too early will cause you flaring way too high above the ground and you may end up falling down um, in, a, in a stall position. Uh, the last situation that we see quite commonly on competition is over-motivated spot landing, trying super hard to hit the spot, breaking too much on landing. Uh, so, okay. I'm sorry to interrupt again, but uh, I think you missed one. Uh, you think the list is too short? I think it's too short. I think, I think there's one more here. Yeah, it's uh, it, and that's, that's hitting an obstacle. There's a lot of uh, hidden wires or hidden okay. obstacles out there, and I've seen it, I've seen videos. I've, luckily, I've never seen it firsthand, but you know, a guide wire going across a river and, and your glider connecting with it, same thing, it'll chuck you forward. And you, know, you fall and straight, you down straight down on your back. Down. Yes. Yeah, exactly. So, anyways, I'm, I'm gonna head yeah, back, yeah, yes, I'm you're head right. back to America now. <laughs> Get your coffee. Uh, yes, what happens if you hit the obstacle and fall down on your back? Hitting an obstacle, glider is down there, so are the wires, and you fall down in this position hitting your back hard. In this case, forget about crumple zone, forget about anything. The only thing that you care of is having a back plate to distribute the load, the impact on the full surface of your back. If there is no back plate, fact is most paramotors are constructed this way. There's a, just a frame construction behind your back as you have these tubes where the engine is mounted to or the fuel tank is mounted to, they, they could literally cut your spine like sausage into, into feces. So please, really, if you don't have any back plate, put whatever piece of plywood add it into, into inside the harness or onto the frame to distribute the impact on a larger surface. I know what I'm talking about. I had this accident, as I, told, as I said before, after having my lines tangled with a brush, I ended up in a full stall falling back. The Scout luckily has a carbon fiber ergonomically shaped back plate. It did hurt like a lot. And, uh, but it probably saved my life and I'm still here walking. Uh, let's do the final summary. So we have all four uh, scenarios and some sort of passive safety, passive safety features. Crumple zone, yes, it would do help you in a vertical fall, which is when you throw your reserve and you're falling straight down. In all other cases, it's pretty much useless. And there is one case where it's actually dangerous. That is when you hit the ground with a fast forward motion and the crumple zone prevents you from rolling and the crumple zone will sort of flap you uh, forward. Airbag is a great solution, uh, yet there are only like one paramotor brand that is implementing this because it's sort of a hassle and, and it creates a lot of drag. Um, Underseat reserve, if you crash on the side, obviously it won't help. On the vertical, it won't help because you already have thrown it. But in uh, any other type of crash, you have sort of a cushion underneath your uh, butt, underneath your seatboard that helps to dampen the impact. Super strong cage is good to save your money uh, as you don't need to repair or uh, replace the prop or uh, cage parts. But in case of a fast impact into the ground while gliding, a really strong cage will prevent you from rolling and it will stop you instantly, exposing you to a high rate of deceleration. Fragile cage, on the other hand, might help you to walk away from such uh, accident. I've seen it right in front of me. Backplate protection, honestly, I believe it's a must. It doesn't cost anything. It doesn't, it weighs almost nothing. So just please do it.
I wish you guys you will never have this bad experience and there is one more accident that could happen in the air and that is getting the throttle cable into the prop. It's very easy to avoid that. So please stay tuned for the next video. Hit the subscribe button. Thanks for watching. Thanks for sharing and see you next time.